This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 35, on the 14th of November 2013, an interview with Stephen Peach, CEO of the company Moshcam. This is the DMT One to One Show, and it's a real pleasure this week to welcome uh, Stephen Peach, the CEO of the company Moshcam. So, hi, Stephen, and great to have you on. How's it going? Andrea, great to meet you. So it's great to be here and talk about Moshcam and what the company does. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know the second of a series of, of shows that I'm dedicating to video. So uh, what is uh, Moshcam in a nutshell? What, what is Moshcam? Moshcam is a um, obviously a, an online service, but we uh, film live concerts and we make them available on demand, essentially. And we've filmed concerts all over the world. We've done about uh, 1,300 artists to date. And... Uh, Planning to do a whole lot more in the future. So, uh, what? Uh, when did you start out, and you know how how did the company evolve from from the beginnings? Excellent. Um, we started uh, here in Sydney, Australia, um, back in two thousand seven, uh, and the uh, the founders had an idea that stemmed from um, simply going to shows and seeing uh, all these people standing there with their phones held up or cameras or whatever, just capturing the uh, the video of the night and um, uh, and so uh, from that was born the idea of uh, uh, filming a lot of those sorts of shows that tend not to be uh, not to attract um, the attention of filmmakers uh, a lot. So we um, we focus in on a lot of artists that are um, probably in, in venues that are between, say, 1,000 and 5,000 uh, is probably our sweet spot. Right. Um, and uh, a lot of people don't um, focus in on that area. And uh, so there was... A, you know, huge fan bases for these sorts of uh, artists and um, uh, yeah so that that from that idea the uh, uh, the company was born in fact um, one of our taglines is put the phone down we've got it covered um, right. <laughs> and uh, so we uh, we started filming here in uh, in Sydney and we uh, focus mostly on uh, internationally recognized artists although we've clearly filmed some Australian artists as well um, in the last 18 months or so we have extended our um, filming uh, production capability through to London uh, and uh, various places in the US as well. That's great. And so uh, let's look at the, there's this various aspects, I think, of, uh, of Moshcam, which are interesting because, uh, uh, you know, there are other companies that are trying to do uh, what you guys are doing. But it's uh, uh, from what I hear, there's a, a lot of hurdles, uh, you know, and, and first of all, let's talk about the, the rice perspective. So uh, how easy and how hard is it to, uh, you know, make sure that you have the rights to broadcast the content you, you have on, on the on the site? It is indeed um, uh, quite a hurdle, um, but it is not insurmountable. A uh, right. n- number of us um, in, in the company have a background in the, in the music industry. I ran the, um, the local version of uh, the BPI and the RIAA uh, here for a number of years, so um, we're well aware of the, uh, the rights landscape, and that was actually one of the primary considerations in, in setting up this company is that um, we knew what we had to do and how to navigate all of this. Um, and so we have um, focused um, very much on making sure that, you know, we're, we're working within um, the contractual parameters that we've got all the relevant um, rights clearances that we need. And uh, I've got to say that through that process, we're working with labels, publishers, collecting societies, um, artist managers uh, and the like, um, all of that has uh, been a very constructive um, uh, dialogue, and uh, you know, as I said, we've filmed uh, thirteen hundred artists to date, so we've managed to get it right you know, thirteen hundred times so yeah. far. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And so, and the other hurdle, of course, is uh, uh, the filming itself. So, do you deal with yeah. the artists directly? Do you have uh, relationships with venues uh, in particular? And then, the, who does the filming? Do you have a, a, a specific crew? Or do you have a project crews that just film a, a one-off gig? Sure. Yep. Um, so uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, there's there's lots of partnerships that in order to make this thing come together, there are many partnerships that need to be formed and, and work well. And venue relationships is uh, is obviously a key part of that. And um, uh, so we've focused a lot on working uh, with some key venues here in Sydney and also developing relationships with uh, venues in London, uh, LA, New York, San Francisco uh, and various other places that we have filmed um, and that that works quite well but yes you absolutely have to do that um, and then the way in which we approach the artists is uh, many and varied um, we obviously know and work with a lot of the key management companies yeah. around the world um, but equally we work a lot with the uh, with some key labels you know, some of the majors key Indies um, 
and uh, and and they if we don't know a way into the uh, the artist, the, often they they will do that for us and uh yeah. so there's many ways in, into uh you know getting yes <laughs> of course of course and uh, so you have a, a fairly multi-faceted approach to the distribution of video uh, videos which is uh interesting and it's sort of like the same one i have for my you know in my small sort of world of dmt for the show which is uh, trying to get it in as many places as possible essentially so you have right. your own channels uh your own site and mobile app but you also have partnerships with third parties for distributing the videos right Absolutely right. So um, yes, we are um, pursuing a strategy uh, at this stage of, of um, uh, ubiquitous distribution, if I can put it that way. Um, you're absolutely right. We have um, our key offering via the uh, the moshcam.com website. Um, we have our mobile apps, both Android and iOS, um, but also the third party partnerships that we are developing as well. Um, probably key amongst those at the moment is our um, uh, premium channel association with uh, with YouTube. Right. Um, and uh, we launched our YouTube channel uh, in late, uh, late February this year. And uh, Already, you know, from a standing start, we're we're performing above the uh, benchmark metrics for a top three percent music channel globally on YouTube, which is which is great. We've still got a long way to go to get to number one, but um, yeah. it's uh, it, it's been sort of very heartening to see the uh, the progress that we made there to date in such a short time. But um, yes, it's it's having um, a multiplicity of those sorts of partnerships. We have other distribution uh, relationships uh, globally as well, um, some of which we haven't yet announced, but. Um, uh, there are, uh, for us, it, it's about getting the content out there um, in whatever way that uh, that people uh, want to access it. We have, it, for example, in, in various territories, we have a, a channel on Sony Bravia televisions right. um, and uh, yeah, a, a variety of different ways of getting, getting the content out there. And so um, one of the key questions when talking about videos uh, and uh, uh, I've been talking about this a lot in the last few weeks because it's a question that's coming up, up um, over and over again, especially when you're talking to independent and sort of smaller to medium-sized artists is uh, talking about a sort of return of investment on videos and whether there is the chance of, uh, of any return of investment on, on investment and monetization options as well. So, uh, of course, I would imagine video, especially, you know, most videos for, for the music side of things are going to still be an advertising play and so how do you see that world progressing and do you feel like there is progressively more money to be made uh, through those channels especially as mobile starts to take off on YouTube and different uh, sources? Oh, look, I, I think that's absolutely right. I mean it's a um, medium to long term play, there's no doubt about that. Right. Um, uh, the the you know, revenue monetization opportunities are probably stronger on our own platform at the moment. And um, uh, there's been, uh, and I'm sure you've picked up on this, as a lot of discussion recently about what is the right way to involve YouTube and is it YouTube only or do you yeah. do multifaceted distribution? And I think the consensus seems to be moving towards multifaceted distribution. That's certainly been our model from from day one. But it's yeah. for us, it's a combination of um, starting with advertising and, and you know, premium brand associations, those sorts of things, involving uh, and YouTube and building that up strongly, and then linking those two, and um, and then we would see there's a a paid subscription um, uh, version that we could uh, make available, and obviously only a proportion of people will take that up. But that involves, from our perspective, um, the addition of benefits, not not um, trying to put stuff behind a paywall. Yeah. Uh, that it is there if you want it, it'd be ad supported. Um, but if you want greater functionality, if you want uh, things like uh, offline viewing, um, if you want high-end audio, if you want um, a range of other benefits, then there's a subscription offering that you know you, you can do that, but it's not necessary. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the as, uh, we're talking about the you know, sort of third-party distribution and, uh, and and the integration of the 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 Moshcam and other music-based offerings into um, service offerings, perhaps, or content offerings from whether it be telcos or uh, ISPs or, or whatever, cable companies even. Um, there's a range of opportunities that are there, yeah. uh, and all of this is developing, as you well know, um, fairly rapidly, and I think there's a lot of people um, working on what is the right monetization model, and uh, we're just making sure that we're everywhere. <laughs> There's <laughs> so lots of people that are, are looking very, very hard for content as well. So I think if you, if you have the content, then 
things are going to start to move your way sooner or later. <laughs> well, that, that's right, and that's what we've 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 always been focused on creating compelling content, and so we spend. Um, uh, put an enormous amount of effort into the not just the the visuals but also the audio most importantly and um, uh, and I, I'm very proud to say that I think the audio that we get on um, uh, our stuff particularly in the last uh, 18 months or so has been spectacular so um, and, that, and that's very very important and that's you know, quite engaging for the fans. And uh, looking at uh, uh, the streaming side of things as well, uh, you know, there's a few companies out there that are fo really focusing on st the streaming of concerts too. Uh, yep. It is a bit of a weird market, you know. It's, it's it's a big question mark as to whether the audiences are really willing to uh, sit down for a live stream at a specific time, and also as to whether yep. they're willing to pay for that. So, is this something that you've explored uh, with Moshcam? Look, we we look at. Um we look at the whole sort of live webcast um, element as being an important part of the the market development. And yes, there are monetization opportunities, but it is challenging. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, but uh, it's part of the overall mix. And so I think that there is the capacity to, to do it. Um, but I agree with what you were, I suppose, observing there, which is that the. Um, the audience for appointment to view um, uh, content is, um, is is seems at odds with the particular with the YouTube platform and the, and the general nature of our business and the way in which particularly, particularly in music um, yeah. people are moving right away from that concept of even linear you know, video channels like a you know, MTV used to be or whatever. Um, yeah. And uh, like a so one-off concerts uh, perhaps work, but like the, even the idea of like an artist broadcasting multiple gigs from the same tour it just it just becomes really old quite quickly i, I look I, I think that's right and and for us it's not a discrete um business proposition it's part of the overall mix and um it it, it acts as a as a beacon for the service to do those sorts of things that's our perspective on it um but um as a standalone proposition it yeah, I think it struggles to to make sense, and I think yes. that um, there'd be a range of, uh, of brands that would look at it that do you know sponsors that look at these sorts of things and do support them. Uh, probably look at the at the numbers at the end of the day and just wonder whether it was really worth it. Of course, and there's also of course like you were talking about the quality of the of the video and the audio. So uh, I'm sure you guys do a lot of post production as well on the audio side to make sure the track the tracks are mixed properly and everything else. So. Indeed, and we work with the artists. Um, you know, it's, it's an important part of the um, uh, process for us that the artist be absolutely on board with it. And uh, every now and then, uh, for whatever reason, the artist doesn't like it, didn't like their performance or whatever, and we just don't get the clearance to put it up, but that's the risk we run. Yeah. Um, thankfully, that's a very rare occurrence, but um, we do work very closely with the artists, and there are some artists who take you know um, uh, incredible pride in, in the sound, and they'll work with us and sharpen it up a little bit and get rid of some um, anomalies that are in there perhaps but um, uh, yes it, it, the, the quality of that sound it doesn't come you know, just by plugging it in and, <laughs> <laughs> and sending it out there. That said I mean the, the, Getting the, the, sound the, the, live, the live sound from the desk when done properly and, and done with a view to um, a live webcast um, can be very very good and, yeah. um, and yeah. there are plenty of examples of that um, but to then to sort of take that down and to have the um, if the relative luxury of spending a, a bit of time in the studio to, to sharpen that up um, yeah. I, you know, provides enormous benefits to the artists and fans. That's great. Well, uh, you know, I would uh, really recommend the audience to go and check out moshcam.com. You know, there's concerts from, from all tastes, from, uh, you know, Bullet for My Valentine, Nine Inch Nails, Alabama Shakes, Hot Chip, uh, you know, there's hip-hop there, electronic, uh, eclectic music of all sorts. So it's a, it's a really great resource. And also, if you are on an uh, iOS device, uh, you can also get the app uh, for iPad and iPhone. Do you have an Android version yet? We do, indeed. That okay, um, was uh, put that out in... Uh May this year, so Great. there for all for everybody except Windows, unfortunately, at the moment. <laughs> yes, but that's uh, it's a small percentage. So <laughs> I think mo most com most companies are going on the Android and iOS route. And yeah, it's I it's a really nice app and it works really well for streaming stuff on the go. And and on the iPad, it looks really great because it's a high definition video. So uh, well, it was uh, an absolute pleasure having you on, and uh, I really look forward to seeing what you guys are going to be up to in the next uh, few months and uh, years. Great, thank you, Andrew. It's great to meet you.
Thank you, and thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One Show. Uh, it uh, goes on every week uh, with uh, different companies and different projects. Uh, so, uh, if you like it, stay tuned and subscribe on one of the channels, including SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, uh, iTunes, of course, uh, uh, Mixcloud, Spreaker, and a bunch of others. And uh, you can also check out the news show, which uh, goes live every week as well, which is a panel uh, show uh, covering the latest news in the music tech industry. And uh, you can find everything on DigitalMusicTrends.com or follow the handle at DG Music Trends. Have a great week and until next time. Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.